They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mills, Your Village Shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're cowboy cooking today. She's got her cowboy hat on. I got my cowboy hat on. So it must be cowboys. You've seen That's our, right. you've seen our uh, ranch. You've seen our cows. You've seen our horse. But there is something a little bit different today. This is going to make things very interesting. Yes, it is. Uh, if you've watched the show, you know that I don't have the use of my right arm doing a motorcycle accident. Uh, go ahead, hold it up. Look, <laughs> it's not really funny. She it's can't awful. use her hand at all. So we're both. I got a thumb. You got a thumb, but that's not doing much. Nikki was in a collision the other day. Your little car was destroyed. Totaled. So here we are today. <laughs> Trying to cook. <laughs> both of us rolling. Okay, it's time to cue the music and time to cue the graphics for our cowboy cooking segment. This will be our Sunday pot roast extraordinary cowboy cooking style. Cha-ching! be really interesting cutting things up today because usually we assist each other and right. so on and so forth but we'll, we'll figure it out and we'll see what happens but you know what before our cowboy cooking segment would it not be nice to have some cowboy music that would i know some boys are they cowboys they're cowboys okay. they will got cowboy hats so they gotta be cowboys right. and we know a cowboy song wow check it out I face the barren waste without the taste of water, cool water. Old Dan and I with throats burnt dry and souls that cry for water. Nights are cool and I'm a fool Each star's a pool of water Cool water But with the dawn I'll wake and yawn And carry on to water Keep a moving then, don't you listen to him then? He's a devil, not a man, and he spreads the burning sands with water. 
Oh, Dan, can you see that big green tree Where the water's running free And it's waiting there for you and me Water The shadows sway and seem to say, tonight we pray for water, cool water. And way up there he'll hear our prayer and show us where there's water. Keep on moving, Dan, don't you listen to him, Dan. He's a devil, not a man, and he spreads a burning sand with water. Oh, Dan, can you see that big green tree where the water's running free? And he's waiting there for you and me. Water. Did you like the cowboy music? I did like it. It's appropriate for this type of stuff. And you know what? Uh, this is a good time to tell you about Tim Farmer's Homemade Jam. It's on KET3. Look it up. We love to bring talent out from all over Kentucky and let them perform at the Lancaster Grand Theater. Guess what? Once a month, we're shooting, taping that show. Come on, join us. Tell your friends who might have some good talent to come on out. We want to share that. Now, something we're probably not going to share is our roast because I'm really hungry. I mean, I if do. somebody came in starving, we'd probably give them a bite. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We have a shoulder roast. Boneless. Boneless shoulder roast. And if you want to talk about our boneless shoulder roast and where that came from, go look at our processing video. First thing we're going to do is look at our little chart. And let's get our pan up to 350 degrees. You're looking at 8 on the bottom, 17 on the top. I'm going to go ahead and sear this. Listen to this. We're just going to get a nice sear going on this to hold that flavor in. It's going to shrink down, obviously. Just putting a little salt, pepper, and garlic on that. Now we're going to brown each side of that and let that get nice and get that nice brownish scored flavor on it. All right, if you hear the fire in the background, nobody's squeaking or there's no mice being killed. It's just the fire. Now, in a little while, we have a fella coming over who's making a portable chicken coop for me. We got our chicks. They're growing up fast. And we need to get them out. And they're not in the house, but they're kind of in a garage. This will protect them. This will protect them. Uh, we can even hang the light out there if we're going to have some cool nights, you know, the heat lamp. Right. But I want to get them really adjusted to start picking in the ground, picking right. for bugs. And we can move it. It's even got a portable thing on the back. But uh, guess who else is coming over? I want to know. I go back cornbread sometimes. It says bolted or unbolted. What is the difference? We're going to find out in okay. a little while. Also, uh, grits. What, what, are, grits. what are grits exactly? We love them, but what are they? We're going to find out more educational side and some fun little recipes that you can do with corn products. That being said, here's our vegetables. Okay. I noticed that uh, there's no peeler device out here. Normally, Nikki does most of the dicing and stuff, but you know what? I have heard that really the best part of the vegetable is the skin. Well, you know, on red skins, I love the skins anyway. Absolutely. It's perfect. It's perfect. And the carrots? Yeah, they're good. They might look prettier, but they're going to taste perfect. All right, we're just going to take this. Oh, you think cut them in half? Yeah, cut you them like in big half. big chunks? Perfect, yeah. I like big chunks. I like big chunks. So tonight, we're going to have big chunky chunks. All we're doing is going to cut the ends off of these and have big old chunks of carrots, big old chunks of unskinned potatoes. And we really had to kind of drastically alter what the recipes we were doing. How about big chunks of carrots? Perfect. You like that? I do. All I'm doing is cutting the ends off. This is, this is interesting, this to is, say the least. This is not. But, uh, let's cut the mushrooms off. Oh, wait a minute. How about... Big pieces of I mushroom. I like that. Uh -huh. Let's not try to cut I'm those. I'm not cutting those sons of guns up. That'd be right. perfect. It's perfect. a chunky stew. I like that. My buddy, Raul, 
an amazing French chef. He had a restaurant in uh, Casablanca. He uh, used to cook for the King of Morocco. Just wow. a fascinating individual. Something that he taught me. These three magic ingredients combined will bring you some savory flavor that you can't imagine. The sweet of a red currant jelly, the tart of a red wine, mm -hmm. and a little bit of the salty of a bouillon, any type of bouillon that you might want to add. It is magic. Now when we get this guy browned, and we're almost there, and we're going to put all these ingredients in, we're going to cut an onion up in big chunks. All we're going to do is add these chunky vegetables, four cups of beef broth, okay, mm -hmm. one cup of water, one heaping cup of your favorite Cabernet, and we're going to use a Pinot Noir here. And you can put however much beef bouillon you want. I'm going to put about four cubes in this. Gives it a nice robust flavor. Now I'm going to use this whole jar. Currant jelly. We're going to salt and pepper to taste. And we're going to let that bad boy roll for about three and a half to four hours. Now this is going to mean every now and then come up and, and replenish your uh, pieces of, either if you're using chunks of of ash or you're using, it's, it's much easier to use briquettes if you're just starting out. Now you know, if you're gonna have you a pot roast, you gotta have some bread, mm -hmm. okay? But those questions I was talking about earlier, I've always wondered what is bolted, Right. what is unbolted. I don't know what that is either. Where do grits come from? Let's find out. Okay. Sally Weisenberger. Last time you were here, you made the perfect, perfect mixtures for biscuits. Three, was it three? Three ingredients? ingredient biscuits. You can't yep. mess them up. You can't mess them up. Being that this is an educational show. Yes. We're all about education. Yes. Okay, do that's like, good. Do I like education? You do. <laughs> you look very witty. Let's talk about what is grits? What's it actually made from? Grits are made from corn. They're ground corn. So whole, basically whole it corn. goes through that process of, of a particular size grind right. and that's what you come up with. So it is. When you, and this is this most of this Kentucky corn as, as far as you Oh know? yes, absolutely. See, I like that. I do too. I like this whole Kentucky local oh, thing. Oh, I do too. And on many of the packages, uh, it'll tell you from which farm the product came. Now, we've had this plate sitting over here looking at me. We've got so many things you're going to do tonight or we're going to talk about. Some things we're just going to give you the recipe and right. go to the link. But right. grits is, you can do a whole lot of stuff You certainly with grits. can. We're going we're gonna to just make some basic grits tonight mm -hmm. with water. You can make them with milk. You can make it with half water and half milk. And you can use the basic recipe for shrimp and grits or a bowl of grits for breakfast or whenever you want to eat some grits. I like honey in mine. Well, I like butter and a little pepper on mine. Butter so. and pepper. See, I like, I like butter and honey. Yeah, that's good too. All right, let's get basic. Let's go okay. with basic, basic grits. grits. Uh, today we're just going to make the grits using water. So to the pan, we're going to add four cups of water. So I'm going to add the last cup because we've already put three cups of water in there. We're going to add about a half a teaspoon of salt uh, and salt to taste. You don't even have to add salt if you don't want to. Oh, you got to have some salt. We're going to add half a teaspoon of salt and then we're going to bring that water to a bowl and when the water boils, we're going to pour in the grits and stir and uh, turn the heat down, simmer for about 20 minutes. For about 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and that's it. That's it, then we're done. All right, derby favorites are coming up. And you were talking about the cheese grits casserole. I, th and I, I think had so. some of that. Oh my goodness. It is yummy, isn't it? Would you share that recipe I, with us? I will, and I will tell you that, that um, I didn't make the recipe up, I did get it from a cookbook. So. It doesn't matter, it's all good. <laughs> okay, this, this is, makes a nine by 13 pan. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's two cups of grits, uh, and I used white grits. Gotcha. Uh, four cups of water, a teaspoon of salt, and three cups of milk. So these grits were made with a little milk and a little water. Uh, melt uh, one stick of butter, add two cloves of smashed garlic to the butter and just let it melt on a very low burner. Add the butter when the, when the grits are done. Four eggs, temper the eggs with a little bit of your hot grits into the eggs, eggs back in, stir that together. Two cups of cheese, pour into a buttered casserole dish and bake for about 45 minutes, 375. Now, you know, and it sets up, see, after a casserole, that, because it has eggs, it's solid. Now, what we're making today is a little more soupy. Mm -hmm. Let's check the grits and see if they're... Mm -hmm. Oh, they are. All right, now you can tell the difference in the consistency. Let me show you the camera. 
Oh, now yeah. they've thickened up, so you've got a softer texture than you would in a, in a casserole. But these are ready to eat. And you can so, use so many things with that. You can. You know what, we think about our cornbread and, and it's one of the easiest things in the world you can make. And it's it an easy side. It is. But I'm a cast iron guy. You see me cooking on all the time. You told me you're gonna make some kind of... Uh, we are, we're gonna make cornbread in a cast iron skillet. So I'm all about that, just like my right. grandma. All right. I'm gonna set this aside. Okay. Now I want to ask you something. All right. I see this all the time, bolted. Okay, what bolted, bolted and all bolted, it's, it means sifted. Bolted means that this has been sifted. So like the, it's, if you get unbolted, that's kind of more old fashioned, coarse grain. Coarse grain. Mm -hmm. like, it's like having it. whole wheat flour. So a bolt is like a, a cloth that it's, that it's sifted, sifted through. through. So, so we're gonna be using uh, bolted in this. Our, bolted our cornbread white. tonight, yes. And we're, we're going to use a um, self-rising cornmeal mix that has a little bit of flour and already has leavening in it, so we don't have to add that. Once again, non-GMO corn. Non-GMO corn. From Kentucky? This is. So, I, and I follow the recipe on the bag. So it's very, you know, this cornbread, muffins or sticks, and I just pour it in there. And now, do you heat this up in the oven ahead I do. of time? I, I heat that in the oven, and I add about two tablespoons of oil. Gotcha. So I'll go ahead and measure it. We have to have some oil so it doesn't stick. Right. But we don't need it to be swimming in it. So, I have found that about two tablespoons is um, about the right amount. About what you need. Right. So, you put that in a hot oven for how long? Put that in a hot oven for a five minutes to maybe five to seven minutes so that that gets really hot. And then while that's heating up, we're going to go ahead and mix up our cornbread batter. One and three fourths cups of this cornmeal mix. So, we're going to add a, a cup and a half of buttermilk. Doesn't that just add the, the richness? And it the does, and the I think it, the, the texture is better. For so, the hush puppies, too? Yes, mm. they really are. <laughs> buttermilk definitely in hush puppies. Oh, yeah. So a cup and a half of buttermilk and one egg, and we're going to whisk this together. And since we're using the self-rising mix, we don't have to add any of the leavening. Wonderful. Yeah, so we whisk this together. That's it, and we're going to cook in a five, preheated 500 degree oven, which is really hot. 500 degrees. But it works. How long? 15 minutes. Really? And it cooks fast. Well, I like the sound of that. I yeah. Like, I like things that are, when, you're, so, when you're hungry, you're hungry, you want to eat. That's right. So you don't have to wait 30 minutes for cornbread. You can have it 15 minutes. I had no idea. So anyway, here we go. So we're going to add to the hot skillet. Hear a little bit of sizzle there. Hear a little sizzle. And it sort of climbs up the side. and. And then into and the oven this goes. Oven. Pop this in the oven for 15 what, minutes. You grab that and I'll pop this oven. All right. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna just sit it right back there. You know what? I, th I think most people would think that 500 degrees, you'd think about black burn. cornbread. Right. 15 it, minutes. It, and it, do, it doesn't. It's a little, so, you, you know, watch your oven. Mm -hmm. All right, so now you're going to take this. I remember the rack from last time. Right. So we're, we, we let it sit for a little while, mm -hmm. and then we're going to hope that it comes out. And if it doesn't, you know, just slide a little knife under there and give it a little Pulse extra it, push. Push it out. Right. So we're going to hope that it comes out. Sometimes I'll put the rack up like this and flip. Oh, yes, it came out. Well. There we go. So. like that. There we have a big skillet cornbread. And it didn't burn. Let me tell you what, I thank it. you so much for coming out tonight. Thank you. We love our Kentucky stuff. And thank you. Non-GMO. We're happy to be on your show. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we got our little chicky babies. Speaking of chicky babies, you miss the girls? I do miss the girls, do you? Oh, we're sitting right up here, you know, making Aww. s'mores. They need to come back. They need to come back. They said their favorite part was, was uh, the s'mores. The s'mores out of everything. We should have had grandkids first. We should have. What were we thinking? I don't know. Nobody told us. <laughs> They're coming back this summer. They're coming back this summer. This we have so much fun with them, and they have so much fun running around the farm here. But we do miss the grandbabies. Yeah. Somebody asked me, well, is grandbabies a real word? And I, I started thinking, I, I don't really think it is. Is that our word? They're but our it's our word. They're, yeah. they're our grandbabies. Right. Now, I talked to Josh the other day. He's the fellow who's been in the car accident, and him and I have a lot in common. Yeah. He's an amazing builder. So we started talking about it. I said, man, I would like something light and easy that I can pull on and move, mm -hmm. have a cover to get them out of the weather, have a roost where they can get back and, and roost, right. and have an egg box where they can jump up and I can come and open it up from the outside. Be nice. Would that not be yeah, nice? Yeah, that'd be nice. We're going to start out small, have our own little egg operation, and here's Josh to show us his outfit.
Josh Blackburn. We talked about this in the office one day. You and I were, you, I can't remember if you called me or I called you, but you were trying to figure out maybe how to use a bow or something. Woodwork, the guy does amazing woodwork. So he's asking me about stuff and I turn it around and I said, what, wait, wait, wait. What about a chicken coop? And I want a movable chicken coop. We don't, for us, we don't need that many chickens. We're not raising a, you know, we're not trying to sell to anybody. We need just enough for us, which takes about five or six hens. So I started talking and you said, I could do that. And so I said, here's what I need. I need something that's, you know, what, what measurements did I give you? Five by 10. Five by 10. Six feet tall. Five by 10, six feet tall. And you know what? That's perfect for the amount of chickens that I'm gonna have. I wanted something that I could move, you know, to pick up and move with one arm. Of course, we're on the same yeah. wavelength there. I wanted a box in the back so I could check the eggs without having to go in. Obviously, they get out of the weather, place in the front where we could let them out and let them roam during the day and go back in. Uh, the main thing was building it light enough so you could get it with one hand. Right. And get into it with one hand. So instead of having two by fours, what did you what did you do differently? I took two by sixes and ripped them to save weight. Gotcha. Make it a little bit lighter. All right. Now you got a bar across here, and I can move this. Oh wow! Once I left it up high enough, that's perfect. Now, obviously, Nikki and I, we have two good arms between us now. If we decide to drag it someplace further. But I mean, that is really fairly light, enough for one, two people to move. Boom, straight up. The chickens like it a little bit dark. They're gonna be under here. I'm gonna put a little straw in here, make them a little nest. In order to check the eggs without having to dig through a big chicken house down there, you just reach in, flush them out of the way, get your stuff. I am tickled to death with this outfit. All right, let's talk about the fact that you, in the last three years, have had to deal with what a lot of people I've been dealing with for 31 years now. The issue that you and I have that you don't see on the outside is pain. Correct. Never-ending pain. Now, that comes with nerve damage and all that sort of thing. That's probably the main hurdle that we have to get through, along with the frustration and the aggravation of how easy things used to be, because that never goes away. Right. Do you find that when you're in the middle of a project sometimes? Yeah, it, it's there quite a bit. Yeah. Now you can get these cheap pre-made kits, but there's this yeah. is stout. I yeah. mean, this all is stout. all treated wood, all stained. This is going to last. It'll be here 15, 20 years. My, you know, some chickens can live up to 14 years. This could be their, this could be their lifelong home. Permanent residence. <laughs> I thank you so much, man, for coming no out problem. and showing us how to do this. And this is when I had my grandbabies out, tiny little baby chicks. I can't wait till it gets a little bit warmer so I can get them out of the garage. <laughs> and Nikki's, Nikki won't be so mad at me for stinking the house up. Is that redneck? No. Okay, we're in Kentucky, right? Some things just gotta be done. <laughs> they gotta be done. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, we've been babysitting this all day. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Anything that you can do in an oven, all you have to do is maintain temperature. Look at that. Oh, oh wow. Look, that's what you want. You know, what? I'm gonna just a big honk and hunk. And oh just, wow. I mean, you can cut that with a fork. That looks good. Look at that. Here's our taters. Oh, yeah. Skins on. <laughs> now watch this. Here's what you want. Wow. Look at that. Ooh, throw another potato on there, too. Oh, look at that. I'm hungry. You like to mash your potatoes up, I do. Now, don't you? And since we're sharing a plate... Wow. I'm gonna grab us a piece of corn over here real quick. All right, lefty. This is hard eating with my lefty. Look at that. Look how that just comes apart. I can't eat with the left man. So tender. Mm. 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 We're gonna have to stop peeling vegetables. Mm -hmm. That's good with the skin on. Mm -hmm. mm. Carrots are good. Oh my, you know. I think the, the skin just are, tastes better. Well, the skin's good for us anyway? Yes. Okay, that's what my mom always we'll said. Never peel again. That's right, my mother always said that. You know how much energy that we wasted? <laughs> it's probably a good time to tell them about our Facebook page. Check it out and like it. Follow us, see what we're going, what we're doing. Also, we updated and beautified TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Check it out for some recipes you might not have seen. There's a bunch of them on there. 
Let's talk about magic when you're doing a pot roast. Just remember this, currant jelly, red currant jelly. That made it. Red wine and bouillon. Mm -hmm. It's magic every time. So you know what? I'm just gonna continue to eat this wonderful tender roast with the non-pilled vegetables. And at this time, we should say it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats, and left-handed people. I'm going to lose weight eating like this. No, you won't. Uh -huh. I'll help you. Uh -huh. mm -mm -mm. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Kinco Farm Fence Supplies, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by the city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Jones, this is Shirley speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hey, Neil. How are you? How was the trip? With nearly 7 million investors. He's right here. Hold on one sec. You'd expect us to have a highly skilled call center. Kevin, Neil Holly's on line one. Okay, great. And we do. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. <laughs>